Today I'm with John Price, uh, Tri-County Invasive Species Coordinator here in uh, northern Wisconsin. And uh, John, uh, we're, we're here to talk about milfoil. I think that's probably one of the biggest problems in these area lakes uh, and streams, not only here in northern Wisconsin, but throughout the entire United States. Uh, what is uh, uh, Eurasian milfoil? Eurasian water milfoil is a non-native aquatic plant that came from Europe, probably in the 60s, to Wisconsin. And one reason why it's so bad, it starts to grow before all the native plants do. And when it does, it prevents other plants from growing amongst it, creating monocultures, so all you get is one plant in the area. So, so is, is, is Eurasian milfoil now, is there, is there different types of milfoil? Is there like a, uh, uh, I think there's a northern milfoil, is that correct? Yeah, actually in Wisconsin there are seven na native milfoils. And Eurasian water milfoil and northern water milfoil, they're really difficult to tell apart. Okay, so, so what's the difference? Do you have some samples? There's a couple of key characteristics you can, you can look for. This is uh, Eurasian water milfoil. If you pull off a leaf, and you cut the leaflets on one side, there will be more than 12 leaflets on a side. This one has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, about 14 leaflets. And opposed to northern water milfoil down here, if you pull a leaflet off, be less than 12, probably closer to seven or eight on a side. Now what about the texture? Is, is uh, I, th I believe, if I'm correct, northern milfoil is a little bit more brittle, is that correct? Versus uh, a Eurasian milfoil? Eurasian water milfoil kind of looks like a feather. And when the feather gets wet, it gets kind of soft to the touch. And that's just what Eurasian does. Whereas northern, if you feel that, it's a lot stiffer to the touch. Out of the water, when you pull this out of the water, it kind of holds this form. Stays looking kind of like a pine tree. Or this, it gets a lot softer. When it gets wet, it kind of folds up like a feather would. Oh, okay. I see. Now, now you say when this grows, now Eurasia milfoil is the first to grow. Is that correct in the spring? Yes, it is. Okay, so how does it grow? Does it grow in like uh, uh, just single strands or? It can start as single strands, but how this plant spreads, it really spreads by fragmentation. So, uh, all it takes is about two inch segment of this plant to uh, break up, break off, then start to grow in a new area. It breaks apart, then it grows, grows roots from that segment. It sinks to the bottom and gets established that way. John, so one thing, uh, you know, you said it grows in strands and then it eventually multiplies and stuff like that, but doesn't it get to the surface eventually and start matting on the surface? Yeah, it goes uh, mat on the surface. Your original water milfoil can grow up to 20 feet tall. And let's say you're in 10 feet of water, goes up 10 feet, then it mats the surface. This is when you see a lot of times where it starts to affect fishermen, boat props, this one starts to clog your motors up is when it's on the surface. And that's for like swimmers and skiers and everybody else too, huh? Yeah, yep, yep. I mean, that, and, and, and so how do, how do you take care of that? What do you do? I mean, what's, what's, what's the typical uh, uh, way to control this? A couple ways you can, you can control it. Large uh, infestations, you can use chemicals. Or if you got sp small spots here and there, or a kind of mixed stand that you can hand pull. Okay, so that's basically what we've been doing here on, in, in northern Wisconsin on Deer Lake, is we've been using volunteers. And what we've been doing is we've been uh, sending divers down and actually uh, uh, taking magnifying glasses and making sure, number one, that it is Eurasian milfoil versus the, uh, the northern milfoil. And then what we've been doing is bagging that stuff up and uh, uh, sending the bags up to surface support teams okay. that eventually take that and they use them into compost piles is, is what we've been doing. So John, what, uh, what, what other negative impacts does uh, uh, Eurasian milfoil have on, on lakes besides the obvious, the boating and things like that? One thing not a lot of people think about is property values. The lakes where, let's say they have invasive species and it's not managed where it kind of takes over a lake. That can actually affect the property value by dropping it 10 to 15 percent. You know, John, that's a great uh, that's a great point. I never thought about that as far as affecting real estate and stuff like that, property values. But I guess in the big picture, anybody that enjoys the natural resources, whether you're skiing, boating, swimming, uh, fishing, you know, we all have a responsibility to uh, 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 protect our waters. You know what I mean? And so. Uh, you know, there's, there's different ways, I think, that we can do this, whether, uh, whether it's uh, monitoring boat landings, walking the shorelines, uh, uh, doing a monetary donation to your local lake district or lo a local uh, uh, lake association, as far as uh, donating time, volunteering time, you know, and, and I'm sure there's other ways.
Yeah, it could be as simple as maybe you have a special quality, maybe you're a great writer, maybe you're good with the internet. You know, like you could help them out in that way too. Those are those are great points, and I'll tell you what, John. You know, I think it's something that uh, we all have got to keep in keep in mind, and, and we certainly have to work together to take care of this problem. We do. You know, well, thanks for your time, John. Thank you. And uh, is there a contact number that we can get from you? Yeah, my office number is 715-369-9886, and my email is John Price at Frontier.com, J-O-H-N-P-R-E-U-S-S -S at Frontier.com. And anybody can get a hold of you at those those two contacts, huh? You bet. Okay. Thanks again, John. You know, I'll tell you what, you've got an uphill battle, but you know what? I think together we can do something. We can, we can.